the art and science of self-cultivation. My friends, here's a little raw talk. Self-cultivation, what is the self we're referring to here? You see, there's the capital S self, and that's that true self that we're aiming to realize through meditation, you know, through our experiences, we're seeking to embody that true self. But the self that we are consciously aware of, that we know, right, that psychology analyzes, that our friends, that we really identify with, is ever-changing. It's malleable. Right? Think of the self that you were five years ago, two years ago, two months ago. Right? It's ever-changing. And that self is a complexity. It's a multiplicity of different drives and impulses and patterns. Right? Essentially, you are the result of your habits of mind and of you know, thought, emotion, and actions. And since this self is malleable, how can we use that malleability to become better, per se, to step into a more flourishing way of life, right? One that, you know, really embodies, you know, our true potential, actualizing our potential, and res results in a flourishing way of life, a thriving way of life. That's what self-cultivation is to me. And here are kind of like my practices and things that have really worked for me. First and foremost, we are the product of our rituals, of our disciplines, right? And rituals, like ritualistic practices are the key because they result in steady progress, right? But we can't define rituals unless we have a worthy goal unless we're aiming our arrow properly. You see, life entails pain and suffering. There's going to be highs and lows. And if we don't have a deeper meaning that we're living into, a deeper meaning that we're creating, right? We won't have the necessary fuel to go through those struggles of self-cultivation, right? So finding that worthy goal, that place to aim the arrow, right? It might be a clear vision, you know? Um, for me, it's like getting land, creating, you know, awesome community and works that serve the world. That's such a worthy goal, something that I tap into and it instantly inspires positive emotional upliftment. You know, that there's a worthy goal for my image of self and what I can become, what I'm, what I'm capable of. And we got to aim that arrow, aim that arrow of your highest hope. And here's the thing, your deep self, your true self dreams big. Right? It's actually not a big dream. It's, it's just evident to the true self. So if we aim that arrow, right? Let's say like, for instance, aiming the arrow to be a great boxer. All the work that you have to put in at the gym day in and day out, right? Has deep meaning. All of a sudden that suffering has meaning, right? So you can cultivate and grow. So aim your arrow and then establish disciplines, you know? Establish rituals around where you're aiming that arrow. Think about where you were three months ago, right? Like at the beginning of the new year. Time has flown since then. It's passed in a blink of an eye, right? Imagine if you had started running a mile, two miles every day since the beginning of the new year. Imagine how you'd feel, how your endurance, how your fitness would be at this point. Well, the next three months are also gonna pass in a blink of an eye. And you are the product of what you do every day, right? So it's like, you know, in the morning time, everyone can have an hour for themselves in the morning time. You know, how are you gonna use that, right? What are two or three things that you're gonna do for that self-cultivation every day? You know, for me, it looks like, you know, a half hour of breath work and meditation and then a half hour of movement and exercise, dynamic training, right? I'm gonna make another video about these disciplines later on, right? But establishing those disciplines, Okay. Every morning and evening for me, I have these disciplines. No matter what, you know, I get them done. The next thing that I find really important is a steady stream of inspiration. A steady stream that is reminding you and inspiring you towards your goal. I do this in two ways. Okay, and I really highly recommend this. 
The first way is I always have a, a kind of a story or a novel, some kind of book that I'm reading that's inspiring me along the path. Whether it's Musashi and the way of self-discipline, right? Whether it's autobiography of a yogi and, the, and the, the story of, you know, mastering the mind and, you know, the yogic system, right? Or whether it's perhaps The Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield, right? All these books invoke, inspire you towards courage, towards self, like discipline, towards, you know, self-mastery. Some kind of inspirational story. I've been really getting into historical fiction, you know, fantasy fiction books with really strong characters, like a steady stream of inspiration is critical, right? The other thing I do is I always have a, you know, more of a nonfiction book, right? That's just really potent and powerful sitting, you know, at, at my, my reading chair, right? And I'll sit down and I'll read a chapter of this every morning. Whether it's The Way of the Superior Man, Letters from a Stoic, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, The Yoga Sutras, the, you know, um, the Tao Te Ching, like whatever it is, something that you can read a chapter of and be inspired towards improving yourself, you know, wisdom to live by, right? And that steady stream of inspiration is important because, you know, the thing about discipline is the first couple weeks are easy, right? But then when things get hard, that's where your discipline is tested, right? The third thing is community, community rituals and community or, or relationships that challenge you and uplift you in the right ways. Oftentimes we're surrounding ourselves with people that are toxic or bring us down in certain ways, right? And learning to say no to that and seeking things that uplift you, you know, on a weekly basis. Right? A couple things for me is like, you know, I have two different martial arts trainings that I do. One is with a group of really awesome people. And we all, we're all there to inspire each other, you know, and focus and, you know, bring forth our energy and attitude. The other one is kickboxing, something I do for cardio and fitness every week. And it really invokes that masculine energy, that testosterone, that energy to really engage with life. And I do that every day. I mean, every week. You know, and over the past months, I've just seen my vitality increase. I've seen my discipline increase by like having teachers, having influences that are bringing you towards your heights, right? Other community rituals, like, you know, with a good friend of mine, most evenings we'll go hike and do a meditation with sunset, do a meditation and ceremony, right? To practice that devotion, to, you know, practice that divine detachment of all this worldliness and return to our source, right? Other community kind of rituals is like containers of intimacy with my partner. And she really challenges me to grow interpersonally, to grow in my character, to step into manhood, right? And viewing all of these challenges, you know, through the lens of these are things happening for me. The things coming up in life, right, are all things happening for me, right? It's like every moment is an opportunity for yoga, literally. And by yoga, I mean self-mastery. Right? Like every moment is an opportunity to master yourself, no matter what it is. And as the challenges arise in life, all of them are blessings in disguise, all of them. Right? So like community rituals, another community ritual that I do is, you know, philosophy group and book group, you know, with some men that I really admire and look up to, you know, and these things inspire the philosopher inside of me, right? It's like we have this true nature. And by learning to align with that true nature, we unlock our potential, our uniqueness, and our fulfillment. And we need to establish weekly and daily disciplines that help us align with that true nature, right? You know, the philosopher inside of me, I have disciplines, you know, personally, like, you know, my work, my writing, my, my creative expression, you know, things that I do every week, every Sunday and Monday, disciplines with a group, you know, for philosophy and books, you know, for, you know, the lover inside of me, for that archetype, you know, I have disciplines of getting into nature, of being with my partner, of have, like have, going to social events, right? For the warrior inside of me, I have disciplines of training, community rituals of training on a daily basis and on a weekly basis. All of these things, my friends, like self-cultivation is small steps. The small step is all steps. 
Literally, like, discipline just starts with, can you breathe every morning for 10 minutes? Here comes the sun, my friends, rising to its zenith, right? Can we just breathe for 10 minutes every morning, right? That's going to harness our willpower, help us be more clear in our body and mind. Can we stay, take slow steps, you know, towards a more healthy, holistic lifestyle? Small steps towards, you know, better fitness and training, dynamic training, right? It's all a series of small steps to become the man or woman that you are meant to be. You see, your true potential is far higher than what you can see now. And you will only be able to glimpse it when your patterns, when your routines are in a foundation that's in alignment with that. So you have a platform to really aim the arrow towards your highest calling and your highest destiny out here, my friends. Self-cultivation really comes down to what you do on a daily and on a weekly basis. And remember that the image of self changes. It's malleable. We got to learn how to use that current, the cur direct the currents, right? Direct that malleability to flow that stream towards the great ocean of our potential, right? Establish daily disciplines. Have constant streams of inspiration, right? And rituals, personally and on a community level. And all of those things are going to lead you to the life in which, you know, really you're meant to have and meant to live. That's just a quick talk on self-cultivation, you know, an idea here. I'm Christian. This is Reality Files. If you guys want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, message me on Instagram over at Reality Files, or there's a link in the description for a free one-on-one -on -one session. Furthermore, I'm opening up the next breathwork group training program. I didn't think I was going to do it, but this one's been so successful and I love working through breath and sovereignty practices with a group of like-minded people. If that interests you, shoot me an email. Uh, you know, email's in the description, christian at realityfiles.com. Thanks for being here, my friends. Hit that like button. Please share this video, get the message out there, and keep training, warriors.